Johnny and Lee here from Open Studio Patterns. We're here at SoCo and we have a sew along for our first pattern release for 2022 capsule, which is this pant that we're calling the shop pant. These are mine. Um, I made, I just want to point out that because this is a, a, pa a pant that has the seam down here, you're going to want to pay attention to the length. And I definitely took out at least two inches of the length in mine. Yeah, we chose to do, a, I'm just seeing it right now, we did a fun pocket lining here on this pair of pants, which is kind of sweet. Like, you might be the only person who ever sees it, but it's like a sweet little detail mm -hmm. on this version. Um, they they kind of have a cool barrel-shaped, slightly minor balloon shape to the leg. It's really great. Um, and then they've got nice big pockets here on the back, and we'll show you how to do this cool little detail, which kind of reinforces your pocket here on the edge as we do the sew along. And this is a dead stock denim that's about a 10, 10 ounce, and we suggest using between an eight and 12 ounce bottom weight fabric for this. Um, it's a closer fitting pant, but has a loose leg and has that nice tapering at the bottom. So it's an interesting shape. So these are a few kind of out of the norm kind of things we're going to be using today in sewing this. The first thing are these Wonder Clips. This was originally made by Clover. Now you can get them under lots of different brands. They're great little sewing clips. So instead of pinning, sometimes I'll do that. Um, I use especially when you're working with thick stuff like denim, which we're sewing today. It's just easier on your hands, easier on the pins. Um, I love these little guys and just have them beside the sewing machine like you would pins. Um, the next thing we're going to do, this is a really cool button, um, like a jeans button, that we're going to show you how we put on with the industrial setting machine, which you don't have, but we're going to show you a few other ways you can also set a button on your pants as well. This is a bone folder, which is traditionally used in book binding, um, but we use it a lot in sewing as a point turner, or you can use this for a curve for getting in on your seams and making them nice and flat from the inside. So this is a really useful tool. Um, also pressing down something that you've, um, you know, you've hit with the iron and then pressing with that. Um, the next thing are these nippers, which you may not have to use on this, but we have to shorten our zipper a little bit, which you'll see later on in our little video. Um, so this is a key for if you want to shorten a metal zipper. You don't need it um, if you're doing a nylon zipper. The next thing is are needles, which are a little bit bigger than you might normally use. Um, uh, this is a size 16 or 100, which you can see right here. Um, these are industrial needles, so they look a little different than your home machine would. The other thing you could get is a denim or even, even a leather needle, which you'll buy like at Joann's or at a fabric store in your notions aisle. And those usually have a really pointy kind of chisel tip to them, so they go through this thicker material that will definitely help you on a home machine. Um, the last thing, along with that bigger needle, is that we also have a little bit thicker thread. This is a, this is a poly covered poly, but it's a Tex 60. So usually what we use in home sewing is around a 27. That's kind of like a serger weight, a basic Guterman weight. Sometimes you go up to 40 for stitching. So this is a Tex 60. So it's definitely thicker. Some home machines may not like it, but we definitely use this for top stitching. Um, I went ahead and used this for seaming as well because my machine can handle it. But this is a great thread. And obviously, this is a giant spool that we use on an industrial machine. And that's it. Yeah, these are some special things you're going to need for this. Uh, for the Well, these are the special things that we needed for our pants today. So there you go. Here's our favorite basic tools. Um, ruler, scissors, snips, marking pen, seam ripper button folder again, clips and pins, again the button, and this is a locking metal zipper. And then here's our cut goods for this project. You'll get to see them laid out a little bit here on the table. So the first thing we're gonna do is interface all of our pieces. I like to have all these prepped so as I get going sewing, it's easy. You'll see here I'm using a pressing cloth. Um, I always use that from both sides, both under and on top of, because I've ruined way too many ironing boards, getting glue all over them. So it's a good trick to get in the habit of. And you know, you want your iron at a pretty warm setting um, as much as your fabric can handle to set those interfacing. 
So the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna attach the bottom pieces of the legs to all four legs. So you can see I'm gonna kinda lay up the first two for you so you can see what they look like. You're gonna match those notches. Um, and then you can go over to the machine and this is with a half inch seam allowance. And we're just gonna stitch all of those together. So next we're gonna clean finish all of these with the serger is what we're using. Um, there's some other options which we have in our pattern which you can look at in the instructions, but that's how we're doing ours. And then we're gonna go and press these. Um, I press all of that seam allowance towards the bottom of the pant to get it ready for top stitching. And then here we go. This is our top stitching. We're doing a quarter of an inch top stitch. So here I'm making my stitch length a little bit longer for this top stitching. It gives a little beefier stitch. It looks more like a classic denim. Um, I just love the way a little bit of a bigger stitch looks on this top stitching. And then when I do seaming, I go back to my normal three or wherever you set your machine. So that's what just happened. And I'm chaining these on and then I come back and clip them after I've sewn them all. It's a good little trick when you're doing, you know, piecework like this. So next we're going to work on our pockets. We're going to stitch, um, we're going to clean finish these pocket edges first with, with our serger. Um, if you have one that is the fastest, kind of handiest way to do this, you can find them and other things. And then they get attached to the pocket bags, which we're using this cool little stripe. So these just get topped on and we just kind of follow our serger line. this a quick press to settle those stitches and then we're going to attach the pocket bag onto the body of the pant. These are right sides together. There's also some notches that you can match up there at the top and again at the bottom of that stitch um, and then we'll go to the machine and just single needle these and this is half inch seam allowance again and you know you pivot at that corner try to get a nice nice point there. Um, that's easy for that to get kind of rounded if you don't get a nice point. And then, um, so you do both, both of those. <clears throat> Here you can see the back side of the fabric. And then the next thing we're going to have to do is clip in that corner. Now clipping is really important in any kind of point, um, curves, there's all kinds of different clipping. You just need to do one clip right towards that, um, Pivot right there, you wanna go really close to the stitches. You obviously don't cut through your stitches. And then, um, cause that's how you're gonna get that sharp point there on the pocket. Then you'll see me at the table here pressing these. So first I open it and press them open. And then next you'll see me um, then press it to the inside. I left this in just so you could see how much futzing Johnny and I do when we're filming these. <laughs> so, ready? Okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so one of the right. one of the you promise you're right. <laughs> one of the really cool things about industrial sewing machines, and we use these a lot. And I'll just show you one of these since we're going to do some top stitching. Is that a lot of times you'll change out a foot um, to do edge stitching. This is an edge. This is an eight. So you can see. I don't know if I can get to where you can see it has like a little raised. And these come in left, right raised edges. Some of them have. Um, a pivoting foot like a hinged foot where you can press down and do top stitching that way I kind of like these stiff edge ones and then so I'll just show you how I'm gonna change out my foot on my machine now you can get these for home machines as well um, but industrial sewing we use them all the time so. so I just put my I usually put my foot just right up on my magnet so I have it ready to go a lot of times we'll have a machine set up with just an edge foot because you know we'll be edging batches of things. 
So it just goes on like your regular foot. Okay, and you can see then, this is a right side edge foot. And so when we're sending things through, you have the edge of that right up against. So do you see that creates a really, really nice top stitch. You know, I, I eyeball this a lot on my home machine um, with the clear plastic foot that comes with my machine, but this is a really nice way on an industrial machine to get an edge finish. So next we're going to close up these pocket bags um, at the bottom with a serge and we're also going to do some stay stitching to make this all easier to sew. We start doing all our side seams and waistband and things. So um, you're going to match notches here. Your pocket is kind of folded. You'll see a little bit different way I fold it on the second um, pant leg, but this is what it looks like, you know, at the end before you take it to the machine. Um, nice fold again, matching those notches. Clipping, I'm using clips here to hold it. And then we'll take it to the machine. So the first thing I'll do is just serge the bottom of the pocket bag. So it's already folded. Um, this is gonna be the interior of your pocket. And then the next thing we'll do is stay stitch um, around the edges of your pockets. And a stay stitch, you know, you just want to make sure your inside of what your regular stitch, um, sorry, your seam allowance is going to be. So seam allowance here is half inch. So I'm probably at an eighth inch since I still have that edge foot on, um, pretty narrow, but that's, you're really just holding everything together. So when you go to do all your seaming, it's easier for you. That's how that one looks, and then you repeat on the other leg. So this stitch we're doing here is what's gonna hold the pocket down so your bag's not popping out there on the edge. It's gonna give it a little structure there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is follow along the stitch I already did um, on that eighth inch line that I made first. So I'll follow along, and then you'll see I'm gonna pivot. Um, and I pivot at the bottom at the point, but you can make yours longer, you can make it shorter. This is kind of um, a design decision. And I kind of made it the same as, you know, I took it to the pivot and then turned. I think I did probably two stitches, not too wide. Again, you could go a little wider, you can make it really narrow. Um, and then I followed, I used the edge of my presser foot as a guide. I use, I do that a lot. So I just put it right up against that first stitch and then follow up to the top. Now I'm gonna do all some, the marking on the inside of my pant. This is for the dart. So I have some notches there. I mark the point at the bottom. This is a pen that washes out. And then I just use a ruler to draw that line in. Makes a really nice, easy way to do my dart. I don't use tracing paper much anymore. I use these kind of washable things. And then you want to make sure you also have your outside pocket line drawn on, which is in your pattern piece. I did a, a white washable chalk on the outside. Um, this is one of the places where I will use pens. I don't use them a ton, but it's, you know, just to hold my dart together a little bit while I'm sewing it is nice. And then I'll also, while I'm at the iron, is prep my back pockets. I like to kind of batch things up. So if I'm at the iron and I know I'm going to, you know, need to be ironing a few things, I'll do those all at the same time. And then I can go over to the sewing machine and sew them all. So this is a nice way to do this. Um, again, I'm just folding these edges in and pressing it. There's a double fold hem at the top of the pocket and the rest of these have been clean finish already. I did serge these, I didn't show that, but um, the edges have been serged and now they just get pressed in to make a nice, um, easy way to top stitch. There you go. Two pockets. Two pockets. Ready to go. 
Ready? Okay. So we're going to sew our dart right now, and there's some different ways to do a dart. You know, when you're working on something really thick like this, um, you don't have to be too persnickety about these tacks and things down here. If you're working on fine fabric, sometimes what you'll do with a dart is actually you'll hand tie it there so you don't get any kind of back tack because it definitely is visible at like a breast dart or on a thinner fabric. But since it's thick, I'm just going to start down here um, at the point that I've marked. Can you see that, Johnny? Okay. And also, you'll notice still using my edge foot, and that's okay. I'm just going to make it work because I'm about to use it again. And so I just need to make sure so I don't wobble. I have to pick up my fabric. Oh, it wants to go right back over there. Okay, now we're on top of the fabric. And so now I'm stitching. When I do the back tack at the beginning and the end of the dart, I just, well, especially the pointy end of the dart, you don't want it super thick. Um, try to make it as minimal as possible at the point. So I just did two or three stitches um, at the very beginning, maybe even one. So there's hardly any back tack, actually. There's like one or two stitches. Okay, and so now we'll go press this out before we put on the pocket. So now we're just gonna sew these hems of these pockets. Um, you know, I'm using the edge foot again. Sometimes what I really like to do on pocket tops too is fold actually the hem to the outside to give it some depth, but unfortunately this is reverse fabric. You know, the color is different on back to front, so I can't do it on this, but if you have a solid color canvas, it's a really nice way to give some dimension. I'm gonna get these darts nice and flat with my iron, press these towards the side seams. Um, you want them nice and flat, the pocket's gonna go on top of that. So I want it to look really nice up there. I use my fingers to spread that apart as I'm pressing and then get it from the front side as well. And then there's your two backs and now we're gonna pin on some pockets so that when we go top stitch these, these move pretty fast at the machine. So I get them all placed matching at the points that I've drawn on with the chalk and then using that eighth inch foot I'm just gonna top stitch these on. Now, this is a little thing I'm doing here at the corner. So you can see I use my tool to pop in all those frayed threads right there. I'm doing a little corner um, tack here, a triangle tack, I should say. And this, what that does at the top of your pocket is that it reinforces it. You know, it gets a lot of pressure up there when you're putting stuff in and out. And so just one single stitch is not really strong enough there. Um, you could also do a full double needle stitch on these pockets. Anywhere on these pants actually would look really great um, to do double needle. Um, I just opted to do a cute little triangle reinforcement stitch up there now if you want to you could also do rivets there's lots of you know things you can do to reinforce pockets so this is just one way that I'll do it again you can see I kind of poked all the threads um, in so none of those things are showing 